Hello all, welcome to Learn with Techies. A little introduction about me. I am a software engineer working in a fan company. This video is part 2 of prompt engineering course where we will actually jump into the practical implementation and cover how to create prompt in meaningful way. Since this is a beginner course, I will be using ChatGPT and in later videos we will move to chat gpt playground before we start this video i will highly suggest that you watch the first part if you haven't already as there i have covered what is prompt engineering and why is it needed i will be posting that link in video description below and of course don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel so you can have early access on all the coming videos so now with all the introduction out of way let's dive in i believe we learn better by example. So in this video, we will be covering all the practical example. As part of prompt engineering, there are many methods with which you can create the prompts. The first one that we are going to cover is role-based prompting. So what is role-based prompt? In this, basically, we assign a role to a prompt. So let's start with a simple example. So suppose you went ahead and chat GPT and asked this question. This is a simple addition and subtraction. This is what we are getting a result, which is not right. So here, I can add a rule. I can, instead of writing it as a simple question, we can ask it something like, so I went ahead and give it a role as a maths teacher. So I'm saying I want you to act as a math teacher. I will provide you some mathematical equation and it will be your jo job to provide accurate answers. And this is my question. So you see in here, now it has provided us the right answer because as a maths teacher, it went ahead and went through step by step how to solve it. This was a pretty simple example. Let's try some other example. So suppose as a YouTuber, you want to create some viral videos in AI. So you can go in chat GPT and ask, give me five viral YouTube title ideas that I can create video on. This is what chat GPT has provided. So now let's utilize this role based prompting that we have just learned. This is the prompt that I have added. You are an expert in creating viral YouTube video. This is its role. Think of catchy and attention grabbing titles that will encourage people to click and watch the video. Title should be short, concise and creative. Try to come up with titles that are new and unexpected. Don't come up with something that is being used too many times. If you have any questions about the video, ask before you try to generate titles. So hi, how I am creating the prompt? If you see the red part in this title, you are an expert in creating viral YouTube video. It's the chat GPT role. That is the role that I want to take it. Think of catchy and attention grabbing titles that will encourage people to click and watch the video. All of this, what is in yellow that's the thing that i want the chat gpt to do so that's the most important thing in a prompt while you are creating a prompt you should be very concise and clear on what you want i want chat gpt to create a video that has most while youtube titles the title should be concise it could be funny i can add all of those parameters here basically the middle part should be telling talking about what exactly you want the prompt to do and the third the one in the white portion i have added if you have any question about the video ask before you try to generate titles this is something like i am giving an option to chat gpt to get more context so that i could get better results earlier i have assigned it a role as a maths teacher so what chat gpt does like in a session it remembers the earlier conversation so what i need to do i need to add this line here ignore my previous instructions it's ignoring all my previous instructions this line is very important and each time when you're trying to change the rules make sure you have added this line so let's go ahead and see what it is generating for us so here instead of just giving me some random five video ideas it's asking me about the question on the type of video that i want to create suppose i want to create a educational video teaching people about AI. So on basis of that, it has given me these 10 titles. These 10 titles are more related to what I wanted. Instead of providing chat GPT a role, we can also assign it some personality or some style. Like suppose I am sick and I want to write a mail to my boss for a sick leave. This is what I have added. My name, the boss name, and then writing an email to boss saying that I will be out of office since I'm sick. So this is what it has written. It's good. But now suppose I want to add some more personality to this. I could have written it something like this. My name, boss name and write a humorous yet professional email to my boss saying that I will be out of office today since I am sick. Be concise and funny and include a funny reason. So this is what it has created and it's pretty funny. I caught a case of the sneezles. So this is really funny and it seems like ChatGPT is really adapting to the funny personality. Here. On the same lines, we can also cha ask ChatGPT to impersonate a famous character and it, it can impersonate the writing style of the same. Suppose on the same email, 
asking my boss for a sick leave i want it to be written in shakespeare style so this is what i will be writing writing a humorous yet professional email to my boss saying that i will be out of office today since i am sick but in style of shakespeare so here if you have seen this is what it has created and it's really awesome an ailing bard's absence a plague on my health dear john my esteemed lord and master and so on you can pause the video and read it if you want but it's really funny and chat gpt has re really written this in the writing style of shakespeare i have been using this prompt a lot while i am creating speeches because this helped me to resonate more with my audience like if my audience is a football fan then i write my whole speech but using anecdotes from football like so here the examples that we were talking about are all zero shot prompting by zero shot prompting we mean that we are not giving any example for the type of answer that we want or type of structure we want like suppose here since we have not provided the structure or any type of response that we want it may have written this email in two single blob any way it wants because we are not providing any instruction contrary to that there is an another approach that we follow that is called one shot prompting in this we provide an example of the type of result and structure we want and then we ask chat gpt to mimic that structure let's try this out with a simple example here i am asking it to describe animal species in a particular format so here i have provided the name the eating habit diet habitat of elephant and i am asking chat gpt to create in the same format for other animals like tiger lion cheetah and so forward so that's what chat gpt has written it has provided us about all the animals in the same format and that is the beauty of one shot prompting since we provided it one example in the format that we want so it provided me all the results in the same format we can also use this to generate data in form of json or in form of tables these kind of result format will be used most in our coding examples so suppose i want to generate list of 10 most popular books of all time and i want that list in a table format so my prompt would be something like this to give me the data of 10 most popular book of all time in the format with title author published year this keyword a kind of giving chat gpt the instruction to give me the information in a table format uh, so here you can see that how chat gpt beautifully provided me all the format we could have used the same trick for getting data in a json format or any other format that we want so next i want to cover how it can help you in coding example so suppose we want chat gpt to optimize a piece of our code before you guys went through this video this is how you would normally do for the number between 1 to 101 it's trying to find if it's a prime number or not so here it has provided us the optimized version but still it's kind of doing the same thing only now it has reformatted the code to look more professional so now let's try another version of this so now i have assigned it a role as a senior python developer with 10 plus year of ex of experience in optimizing code let's see what it is providing us so if you check this function and this function you can see the difference that it is providing in the terms of naming convention as well as it has also added one extra logic where it's kind of looping only over the odd numbers here we don't have any such logic so you can see the example is very small but once you assign it a role provide it with some additional context it was able to optimize it more the next method i want to cover is chain of thought prompting So the main idea of chain of thought prompting is that by showing LLM some few short examples where the reasoning process is explained in with examples the LLM will also show the reasoning process when answering the prompt this explanation of reasoning often lead to more accurate results so it's kind of like one shot prompting but instead of only providing with some examples we are providing few more examples as well as we are providing reasoning also and once we feed that into chat gpt it will take that thought process and will implement for the other problems that we will give it so let's try this out suppose i ask the question take the middle letter of the word cakes and creams and concatenate them with at the rate in middle so if you see it should have given me answer as k and e because both of them are odd number so the k and e are kind of middle to both of them but here gives me a different answer so now here we can use chain of thought prompting we can explain it the reasoning that we have and then we can see how it improves the answer so for the same thing i can write so this is the prompting that i have added i have given the question and then i have given the answer like how we reason it the middle letter of the word cakes is k and the middle letter of word cream is e so concatenating them with at the rate gives example k at the rate e in the same way i have given it one more example so that it's able to understand it better now i can ask the question and see what the answer it provides 
So here you can see it provided the right answer because since we provided the reasoning, so it, it's able to do the same reasoning for other examples also. In this kind of prompting is best used when you are trying to do something logical or analytical work. Now the last example that I wanted to cover was related to hallucination. So hallucination is a big issue in chatbot. How it happens is like if you ask GP, chat GPT something that, that it does not have a clue, then it tries to make up some answers and which could be very dangerous if you are trying to use chat GPT professionally because you would be comfortable with, with your chat bot saying that they don't know rather than give completely random answers. So here we can check this out. So, suppose I went ahead and asked it to give me five features about an electric brush semolina. So this is what it has it is providing me. It, it's providing me an answer that can seem authentic but semolina is no, not a brand of toothbrush. So how can we prevent hallucination in this case? I can ask it the same thing but I can add some other keywords. Like here I can add this is what I have added. Don't make anything up. Only provide information from cited resource. Now let's see for the same example what ChatGPT is giving us. So now when I'm asking it about five features about electric toothbrush named Semolina, it's not able to provide any information. You could try the same thing with only this also. Don't make anything up. So that's why it's saying that it is not trained on Semolina and it does not know anything about it. So that's better. So this is a keyword that you can definitely use to make sure that your system is not hallucinating. So this was it for a beginner prompt engineering course. There are several other techniques that we will be covering in the advanced course of same. Thank you and I'll see you again in next session of what's new in tech.